with you freaking grits just can't ever be quenched. Your, your fantasies can't ever be quenched, can they? You freaking grits. What will you learn? What will you learn that your actions are Lolcow, a term that echoes throughout the vast expanse of the internet, evoking images of eccentric individuals ripe for online trolling. These people are a peculiar bunch, often unsuspecting of the laughter and mockery they attract. Their bizarre behavior and questionable actions earn them the dubious distinction of becoming instant internet sensations, and some even achieve legendary status by becoming the subjects of some of the most iconic memes in the history of the World Wide Web. While there are many lolcows out there, few have captured the collective attention of the internet as much as Sammy Classic Sonic fan, as he stands out from the bunch. Sammy's notoriety comes from his passionate rants about Nintendo and Sonic games, his short-tempered personality, and his peculiar use of euphemisms to replace curse words. It's because all you freaking freaks won't leave me the frick alone. These videos were initially meant to express his love and sometimes hatred for these iconic franchises, but they quickly became viral hits for all the wrong reasons. However, Sammy's frequent outbursts and over-the-top reactions to his haters only served to elevate his status as a YouTube icon. One of the hallmarks of a lolcow is their inability to learn from their past mistakes. They often let the relentless bullying from trolls and haters affect their behavior and mentality, leading to a catastrophic spiral that ends in the complete destruction of their lives. Daniel Larson is a prime example of this, whose naivety and social ineptitude led him down a dark and twisted path that culminated in one of the most disturbing and tragic downfalls in human history. But Sammy's story is different. Despite being an internet punching bag and one of the most despised YouTubers of his generation, he somehow managed to turn his life around and establish himself as a respectable person with genuine goals and ambitions and a content creator with a devoted following. This remarkable transformation from a lol cow to a likable person is nothing short of incredible, and it's a journey that we're about to explore. So buckle up and get ready to witness the story of Sammy Classic Sonic Fan. Awful news. I am leaving the internet. The truth is, and I guess I've been struggling with this illness for years, and that is depression. Oh shit. Oh pray them niggas go away. Oh, we sell the clowns around it, look like circus show. This is not the album either, these are just the throwaways. This is still so cold when it drops, it's gonna be a motherfucking snow day. Sammy Thomas was born in the heartland of America, Indiana, on a day known for spookiness and celebration, October 31st, 1998. When he was just three years old, Sammy was diagnosed with high-functioning autism, a condition that would shape his life in ways he could have never imagined. Gaming had always been a part of Sammy's life thanks to his early exposure to Game & Watch Gallery 2 at just two years old. However, it was a gift from his parents when he turned five that would spark a deep love for the world of gaming, the Sonic Mega Collection on the Nintendo GameCube. As Sammy grew older, he became more and more immersed in the world of gaming. He took a game programming class during his second grade year where he learned the fundamentals of game production software. His experiences with game development, coupled with his passion for playing Sega and Nintendo games as a child, led Sammy to develop a deep connection to the Sonic franchise and the gaming industry throughout his adolescence. The rise of video sharing sites and online communities in the early 2010s was a game changer for Sammy. With his passion for gaming and Sonic, it was only a matter of time before he would eventually take his hobby to the internet. In 2009, Sammy created his first YouTube channel under the name Multi Mario. Sonic, but it wasn't until 2013 that he began creating content under the name Sammy Classic Sonic Fan. Sammy's first video, uploaded on April 19th, 2013, was titled Sammy Classic Sonic Fan's Top 10 Sonic Games. The video featured no on-camera appearances or voiceover commentary from Sammy and was made entirely of images and text in Windows Movie Maker. This video was the calm before the storm, as Sammy would soon become one of the most controversial and polarizing figures in the online gaming community. After testing the waters with his first 
first video, Sammy began making review content, where he discussed his opinions on various games. His first review video, also uploaded on April 19th, revealed his face and voice online for the first time. In the video, he wasn't afraid to share his opinions, which sometimes led to displays of emotions that some viewers found strange. So let's get to the most important aspects. Great. Another style of content that Sammy would eventually dabble into was stop-motion animation shorts with Sonic and Mario toys as his leading characters. These videos didn't garner much attention at the time, as Sammy was just starting to make content. However, they provide an interesting glimpse into the mind of a young gamer who was passionate about his favorite characters. Sammy's videos may not have been great, but they were just a kid in his bedroom making YouTube videos about Sonic the Hedgehog for fun. It was pretty innocent, even if some of Sammy's displays of emotion in his reviews were a little weird. However, this would all change very soon. After uploading a few videos that gained modest views, Sammy posted a video titled Stop Criticizing the Wii U on May 24th, 2013, which would go on to be the first video to really give him his first dose of online notoriety. The video was Sammy's defense against the Wii U's detractors who had criticized Nintendo's new console on social media and internet forums. Sammy's argument was unscripted, unfiltered, and 12 minutes long, consisting mainly of him yelling at his camera and repeating the same argumentative points. To understand why the video gained so much attention, it's essential to consider the context surrounding the Wii U's release. Nintendo had just released a new era of consoles after moving on from the Wii, which had been one of the most successful consoles in all of gaming history. History. However, the Wii U was met with mixed reactions from fans and critics. It was commended for its unique controller concept, improvements to online capability, transition to HD graphics from the Wii, and backwards compatibility. However, it was also met with fair amounts of criticism, mostly surrounding the console's interface and functionality and the gamepad's short battery life. In addition, most Nintendo fans were somewhat disappointed with the Wii U's weak catalog of launch titles, lack of third-party support, abysmal marketing campaign and failure to differentiate the gamepad's unique attributes from being just an add-on accessory for the Wii. Remember when you were a little kid and you wanted a Wii U so bad and when you'd ask your parents to get you one for Christmas they would say, sorry honey we'd have a Wii at home? That in short is pretty much the exact reason why the Wii U was such a massive flop. But despite the Wii U's flaws, Sammy was a staunch defender of the console, which he owned and enjoyed. His video was a passionate defense against the console's critics, who he believed did not appreciate its potential. Although some of his points were reasonable, Sammy's presentation overshadowed them. He ranted, screamed, and repeated the same argumentative points over and over, making it hard for viewers to take him seriously. Yeah, I'm gonna freaking die, you guys, freaking something. You know, just something I wanna get out of my freaking chest, fucking you people can do it, stop criticizing. Stop criticizing the Wii U! I have the Wii U! I have it downstairs! It's one of my favorite systems of all time! We don't know why, you fricks! And we don't want- I don't want to hear it! Stop criticizing the Wii U! Well, seriously, what the frick? Within a few days of uploading the video, it spread across numerous internet forums, attracting a broader audience to Sammy's channel. Unfortunately for him, the attention he received was mainly negative. People either found his bizarre nature comedic, or blasted him for his childish tantrums, repetition of superficial opinions, and absurd statements. However, the video's attention was a turning point in Sammy's career. It marked the beginning of his online journey and changed the course of his future. Sammy's career on YouTube would grow, and he would steadily gain a cult-like fanbase over time thanks to his unique and eccentric personality. From here, Sammy's journey would only get crazier, and he would go on to post more controversial videos that would attract a devoted following of ironic fans. Sammy, a young YouTuber, had been creating content for his channel for some time before he posted his 25th video on May 27th. It was just another regular video where he played Sonic Adventure's Emerald Coast level while providing his own commentary. However, Sammy's newfound following after Stop Criticizing the Wii U had people gravitating towards this video in particular, and it wasn't long before it became clear why. The apparent poor quality of Sammy's mic, his hilarious outbursts and rage-fueled screams whenever he fell or got hit in the game made this video especially amusing. It was the perfect storm of a comedy goldmine that showcased Sammy's unique personality and talent for delivering funny and engaging content, whether it was intentional or not. Okay, so I've just been playing some Sonic Adventure video, playing Sonic. Um, uh, alright you freaking frick, we're in freaking Emerald Coast. Let's get started on this freaking race! What the fuck? What? Freaking stupid! Whoa! What the frick? So, we have to get checkpoints. Let's get started! Oh, freaking yes! Oh, yeah! Ah! Freaking avoid it! What the? 
actually a lot of fun. Let's just go through the. What the frick? It quickly became a hit among his loyal fan base. Another video that gained traction during this period was Sammy's notorious rant about the 2000 PC game Deus Ex. Despite the game's high regard among PC gamers, Sammy's opinion didn't quite align. The 22 and a half minute review, labeled as a rant, stood out from his other reviews. What set it apart was the fact that Sammy had never actually played the game. Nevertheless, he expended the entirety of the video berating Deus Ex for what he perceived as an overemphasis on brutality and violence as core gameplay mechanics, coupled with excessively dark themes and elements. Bizarrely, he even drew multiple comparisons between the game and the popular sandbox game Minecraft, a connection that seemed puzzling to say the least. Sammy's disdain for the game appeared rooted in a negative bias against first-person shooter titles. Reactions to the video varied among his fans, with some viewing it as a display of Sammy's complete lack of comprehension regarding Deus Ex's core gameplay and first-person shooter mechanics, while others found amusement in his childlike rants and the frequent mispronunciation of the game's title. Around this juncture, in Sammy's career, he had begun to establish a name for himself. The stop criticizing the Wii U video had thrust him into the spotlight, providing him with a consistent base audience. However, the Deus Ex rant expanded Sammy's recognition into different communities and subgenres of online forums, such as Kiwi Farms and 4chan. The video gained significant traction, eventually finding its way to Slash V. 4chan's primary board for video game-related content, approximately a month after its initial upload. The amalgamation of being featured on 4chan and Sammy's growing fanbase propelled the video to new heights, spawning an abundance of memes centered around Sammy. The most notable inside joke revolved around his repeated mispronunciation of Deus Ex as Deuce Ex. The Deuce Ex meme inspired a flurry of content, with Sammy's fans even conceiving ideas for a fan game based on the joke. Speaking of fan games, it was around this time that Sammy embarked on his own fan game project, albeit one that never materialized due to obvious reasons. On June 2nd, 2013, Sammy unveiled Nintendo Direct Mini, Sammy the Classic Hedgehog. This 8-minute video served as a parody of Nintendo Directs, the video presentations through which Nintendo unveils new titles for their latest consoles. Sammy introduced his concept for a self-insert Sonic the Hedgehog fan game titled Sammy the Classic Hedgehog, which he described as a game that plays like Sonic 1, Sonic 2, and Sonic CD, but has the boss battles of of Sonic Adventure 2. The video featured a mixture of gameplay footage from existing Sonic games and Sammy's imaginative ideas. Though Sammy's fan game idea never came to fruition, the video showcased his creativity and dedication to the Sonic franchise. Despite the undeniable popularity and infamy of his videos, Sammy faced intense criticism and online bullying from trolls and haters who took joy in mocking his idiosyncrasies, latching onto his passionate rants, and ridiculing his emotional outbursts. The negativity from these individuals was relentless leaving Sammy's mental well-being in a precarious state. Nonetheless, Sammy continued to release videos at a consistent pace, undeterred by the online ridicule. His fan base, comprised of both genuine supporters and mostly ironic viewers, stood by his side, fostering a community that embraced Sammy's quirks and celebrated his unique presence within the online gaming sphere. As Sammy progressed through his early YouTube career, his content underwent subtle changes. He experimented with different formats, including live-action skits featuring himself in stop-motion animation shorts, often centered around his beloved Sonic the Hedgehog. While these videos showcased his creativity and commitment to his craft, they failed to resonate with his audience as strongly as his rants and game reviews. But little did Sammy know that his journey was about to take a dramatic turn, catapulting him from the realms of a mere lolcow into something far more remarkable.
One of the most noteworthy and infamous videos on Sammy's channel was uploaded on July 15th, 2013, titled Stop Hating on Sonic. In this video, he passionately addresses critics of the Sonic franchise who often focus on its occasional missteps. The video quickly gained traction, becoming a viral meme phenomenon and attracting the attention of popular YouTubers like Chadtronic. While the video amassed around 150,000 views on Sammy's channel before its deletion, re-uploads on Sammy archive channels have garnered over 3 million views and continue to grow. In the video, Sammy makes several points. He asserts that people dislike Sonic for no reason and claims that the franchise has improved in recent years, especially after the release of Sonic 06. Sammy also mentions that some individuals criticize Sonic Generations for being too straightforward, featuring excessive 2D platforming segments and having a graphic style that appeared too childish. He briefly commented on the favorability of the Sonic Adventure games due to their dark scenarios. Despite acknowledging that Sonic has changed, Sammy believed that it was currently at its best. He expressed a preference for retro Sonic games but emphasized that it does not imply modern Sonic is bad. Sammy highlighted the cartoonish appeal of the Sonic franchise as one of the reasons to enjoy it, and he mentions that some people criticize Sonic for being a Mario ripoff. However, the audience's response to the video focused more on Sammy's intense rage than the points that he attempted to convey. This led to the video's popularity as a source of humorous quotes and moments that became popular memes. Sonic is not trash anymore. I know it's kind of hard to believe after we got that monstrosity. Sonic is sick. We don't care what you guys say. Oh, Sonic. Oh, six was a good one. Sonic oh, six. Best Sonic ever. <laughs> Idiot. No. Naturally, the video's viral success did not necessarily benefit Sammy. Despite the increased attention and unprecedented viewership, he became a target of ridicule and mockery. This marked the moment when Sammy truly became a lolcow, with his actions and behavior increasingly documented and archived online for the world to see and laugh at. Undeterred by the growing backlash, Sammy continued creating his eccentric content. Just 11 days after Stop Hating on Sonic, he released Sammy Classic Sonic Fans Adventure on July 26, 2013. This short film served as Sammy's directorial and acting debut following his quest to retrieve the legendary Fire Mario backpack that grants the fireball ability from the Super Mario Bros. games. Sammy portrayed himself as the main character and voiced all other characters represented by plushies and amiibo figures. Filmed primarily in his backyard, Sammy's sister Morgan served as the camera person, while Sammy edited the footage using Windows Movie Maker. Despite its harmless and innocent tone, Sammy Classic Sonic Fans Adventure faced similar reception to Sammy's other popular videos. Many people made fun of it, and even popular YouTubers like Chadtronic reacted to it, further propelling Sammy's presence in the online sphere. Several months passed without any significant developments in Sammy's YouTube channel until October arrived. On October 2nd, Sammy provided a long-awaited update on his fan game concept, Sammy the Classic Hedgehog. This 20-minute video showcased concept art, new characters, and hinted at potential continuity for future titles or spin-offs. Unfortunately, the update did not lead to anything substantial. Five days later, on October 7th, 2013, Sammy uploaded a video that would profoundly impact his life. Titled Rant Against the Sonic Fanbase, you all ruined Sonic. This 13-minute rant featured Sammy passionately explaining the urgent need for a 3D Sonic game with classic Sonic design. 
It's crazy to think that 10 years later, we actually got that, that that's actually a reality. He further elaborated on how the modern Sonic fanbase was allegedly ruining the franchise. The video quickly went viral due to Sammy's characteristic outbursts, including moments of chaos and even tears. Throughout the video, Sammy expressed his disappointment in the modern Sonic fanbase's obsession with a potential Sonic Adventure 3. However, Sammy seemed oblivious to the irony of his criticism, considering that his Stop Hating on Sonic video had already contributed to the negative reception of Sonic fans online. Unsurprisingly, Sammy's video received substantial criticism, but it also left a significant impact on meme culture. The most popular re-upload of the video reached around 7 million views before it was removed in 2021 for violating YouTube's child safety policy. Due to the considerable amount of attention that this video was getting, it gave rise to numerous memorable quotes and lines that would eventually become standalone memes. In response to the ongoing attention and hate, Sammy uploaded a video on October 30th, 2013, just a day before his 15th birthday, titled, Sammy Classic Sonic Fans Rant Against Trolls and Haters. In this video, Sammy expressed his frustration towards internet trolls and haters, emphasizing the unfair treatment he received for expressing his opinions on the internet. He defended his preference for Nintendo, arguing that it did not make him a bad person or a Nintendo fanboy. Sammy criticized those who publicly humiliated him online and created videos to criticize others, deeming it pointless and unnecessary. He also critiqued the gaming industry, highlighting the unfairness of certain companies like EA releasing similar games each year and profiting from them. Sammy also addressed the criticism he faced, arguing that he should not be expected to ignore it, especially when receiving threats. He revealed feeling targeted and emphasized the unfairness of people making fun of his age, mocking his autism, and criticizing his Sonic fan character. Sammy expressed frustration towards those who supported online bullying and inappropriate content about him. While apologizing for any offense caused, he stressed that there was no excuse for hate and bullying. Sammy argued that his haters were jealous of his views, subscriber counts, and ability to express himself freely on the internet. He defended himself by stating that he had a life outside of his videos, enjoyed outdoor activities, had friends, and possessed extensive knowledge about video games. He concluded the video by pleading for an end to criticism and hate, not only towards himself, but to anyone facing similar treatment online. But unfortunately, the hate and bullying persisted. Just a little over a month after celebrating his 15th birthday, Sammy decided to rebrand and change his YouTube name from Sammy Classic Sonic Fan to Sammy Tanuki Gamer on November 30th. A few days later, on December 6th, Sammy uploaded another video addressing his trolls and haters, specifically those accusing him of lying about his age. Despite being genuinely 15 years old at the time, Sammy faced criticism for supposedly fabricating his age. Accusations persisted, with some suggesting that he was as young as 7 years old. This angered Sammy, inspiring him to create Stop Denying My Age. In this nearly 12-minute video, Sammy expressed frustration and anger towards individuals who continually denied his age. He addressed the haters, asserting that their accusations of lying about his age were baseless. He emphasized that he was 15 years old and urged others to accept this fact. He dismissed the claims of being younger, citing confirmation of his age by friends on YouTube. However, some people stubbornly refused to believe him. The video highlighted Sammy's insistence on being 15 years old and his frustration with people denying it. He responded to criticisms about his voice and his height, expressing discontent with the current era and societal changes. Sammy refused to provide personal information to prove his age. 
Throughout the video, his strong emotions and confrontational tone underscored his exasperation with the situation. On December 15th, Sammy changed his channel name back to Sammy Classic Sonic Fan and created a separate channel for Sammy Tanuki Gamer. He decided that all of his Nintendo-related videos would go to Sammy Tanuki Gamer, while other content would remain on Sammy Classic Sonic Fan. However, Sammy had no idea what was about to unfold. At around this period, a group of trolls discovered and leaked highly personal information about Sammy and his family, including their home address and phone number. Sammy had fallen victim to doxing, and the consequences were soon to be felt. On the night of December 20th, 2013, something peculiar happened. Sammy's YouTube channel vanished into thin air, along with his Google Plus page and website. Confusion spread among his followers. Did Sammy quit due to relentless trolling? Was he banned? Or had his YouTube account been hacked and deleted? People were left searching for answers. The truth behind this mysterious disappearance would soon come to light as Sammy and his parents decided to address the situation. In a heartfelt message to his fans, Sammy's parents relayed their concerns about the ongoing trolling and the impact it had on their son. Sammy's mother had made the swift decision that Sammy should stop creating YouTube videos, deeming it unsafe with the presence of trolls. It was a disappointing turn of events for his fans, especially since Sammy's 50th video special was nearly complete. Sammy placed blame squarely on the haters, leaving a bitter taste in everyone's mouths. His videos were all set to private, effectively shutting down his channel. He bid farewell to his viewers, expressing gratitude for their support and acknowledging the effort he had put into his videos. With a heavy heart, Sammy closed this chapter of his online presence, unaware of the unforeseen challenges that lay ahead. Sammy's mother also stepped forward to address the situation situation and defend her son. In a firm yet compassionate response to the trolls, she acknowledged their actions as a violation of their family's privacy rights. She reminded them that Sammy was still a young individual with autism who struggled to comprehend the gravity of his actions. She implored them to consider the challenges faced by individuals with developmental disabilities and urged them to foster a more understanding and tolerant online environment. Asserting her family was just like any other, she defended her and her husband's parenting and called out trolls for their own questionable inner internet activities. With a final warning, she wished them a better future, free from such toxic behavior. Among the confusion and concern, a Facebook user sought clarification regarding the decision to remove Sammy's accounts from YouTube, Gmail, and other social networks. Sammy's mother, as the responsible parent, explained that she believed Sammy, with his autism, was not capable of safely navigating the internet. She chose not to elaborate further, bidding the inquirer goodbye. At that moment, it seemed as though Sammy had vanished completely. His personal information had been exposed through doxing, leaving his family deeply aware of his online presence and history. It appeared that Sammy's absence would be prolonged. However, Destiny had other plans in store. On December 26th, 2013, Sammy emerged online once again, this time under the channel name Snoopy Flying Ace 64 likely without his parents' consent. All the videos he uploaded to his channel were set to private, visible only to his closest friends and those he trusted. Within this hidden collection of videos, Sammy shared announcements and updates about a new project he had embarked upon, a book titled Escape from the Killer Volcano. Little did he know that this work would eventually evolve into a concept for an original book series called Sammy Space Time, but I'll get more into that later. As the new year dawned in 2014, Sammy made a surprising return to the public eye after a hiatus of almost half a month. His appearance came through a YouTube channel called Cool Tech Gaming, although it was not run by Sammy himself. On January 4th, a video of Sammy playing through the final stage of Sonic 2 was uploaded, stunning those who had assumed that he was gone for good. The video served as confirmation that Sammy was alive and well. Throughout January, Sammy continued to upload gaming-related content and provide updates on his book series to his private Snoopy Flying A64 channel. However, an unfortunate turn of events occurred when a fan or group of fans gained unauthorized access to his videos, leaking them to the public. In response, Sammy created a daily motion channel called Sammy Paper Mario Fan and made his YouTube channel public once again in February, officially announcing his return to the internet. On February 7th, Sammy underwent yet another rebranding, changing his channel name to Sammy Spacetime's channel. This new name reflected his latest book series, in which a fictionalized version of Sammy gained time-traveling superpowers 
explorers, embarking on adventures to witness significant historical events such as ancient Rome, the life of Jesus Christ, and the 1950s. Sammy shared the inspiration behind his work on his Google Plus account, referencing his earlier book, Escape from the Killer Volcano. He described how his love for creativity and writing led him to expand the series and incorporate time travel and superpowers, resulting in the birth of Sammy Spacetime. And so, Sammy's journey continued, filled with new chapters, unforeseen challenges, and an unwavering passion for sharing his creativity with the world. On February 16th, 2014, an intriguing development occurred in Sammy's online journey. He gained his own fan-created wiki site known as Frickopedia. But this wasn't your typical fan site. Led by a group of fans called the Elder Council, with Ooglogger as their leader, Frickopedia was established with a dual purpose. Not only did it aim to document and present Sammy's online history and antics in an easily accessible format, but it also sought to entertain through humor, employing sarcastic and edgy language. However, it must be noted that some articles on the site contained insults and joke pages primarily meant to poke fun at Sammy. As the word of the Frickopedia spread, Sammy became aware of its existence and the content it housed in early March. Unsurprisingly, he was displeased with the website and its contributors. In response, he took it upon himself to modify and alter the site's articles and content. Realizing the changes Sammy had made to the website, Ooglogger addressed the situation by posting a message on the wiki on March 5th. The message conveyed a sense of control, stating that previous edits could be archived and restored, and emphasizing that Sammy was solely responsible for the consequences of his actions. After some maintenance work, Ooglogger promised to restore Frickopedia to its original state. Following the revisions made to rectify Sammy's edits, Ooglogger provided an update on his thread, expressing his belief that sufficient damage control had been undertaken. He expressed relief that the situation had been contained, allowing him to return to his usual activities. Sammy couldn't resist responding, asserting that he wasn't the one causing damage. He claimed to be eliminating the pollution comprised of constant insults directed towards him, and dismissed any concern about others' opinions of him and his colorful behavior, affirming his intention to continue editing the wiki. Unfazed, Ooglogger threatened to ban Sammy for his misbehavior. He questioned Sammy's presence on the wiki if he truly didn't care about their opinions. He also expressed curiosity about how Sammy had even discovered the wiki in the first place. In his final reply to the thread, Sammy asserted his awareness of the wiki, implying a knowledge that surpassed what others might assume. He also made a plea to avoid being banned, as he enjoyed using Wikia. Despite his appeal, Sammy was promptly banned from editing Frickopedia by the moderators, fulfilling the prophecy foretold by the Elder Council. Sammy's efforts to alter the wiki had ultimately failed. Soon after that, Sammy would create his own wiki site for himself. Moving forward to March 31st, 2014, Sammy made the decision to revert his channel name from Sammy Spacetime's channel back to Sammy Classic Sonic Fan. Along with this change, he provided an update on the Sammy Spacetime series, revealing his plans for a revamp. The following day, on April 1st, Sammy embarked on an unexpected endeavor to troll the trolls themselves. True lolcal behavior, indeed. He uploaded a video that initially seemed like a farewell message, creating the illusion that Sammy was quitting YouTube for good. However, given the date of the upload, it became evident that the video was an April Fool's joke, designed to deceive viewers into believing Sammy's departure was real. A week later, Sammy unveiled the revamped version of Sammy Spacetime, now renamed Skylar Spacetime. The series featured a new protagonist, Skylar, as Sammy felt his previous ideas for the series were lacking and unsatisfactory. Continuing his creative pursuits, Sammy uploaded the sequel to his short film, Sammy Classic Sonic Fan's Adventure, titled Who's That Imposter? Unfortunately, this video encountered audio issues and was deleted and reposted twice by Sammy. However, the final fixed version was uploaded the next day and is widely regarded as one of Sammy's funniest videos to date. In this entertaining video, Sammy begins the story on a sunny day, casually browsing the internet. To his surprise, he stumbles upon a mirror YouTube channel that has been re-uploading his videos without his permission. Shocked and determined, Sammy decides to track down this imposter and bring them to justice. The narrative unfolds as Sammy receives a letter from the imposter, revealing their jealousy and admitting to create the Mirror Channel. Equipped with the Sword of Terra Celestial and the legendary Fire Mario backpack from his previous adventure, Sammy embarked on an epic quest to locate the imposter. During a short montage, viewers are treated to glimpses of Sammy's surroundings as he searches for clues. Eventually, he discovers a plastic treehouse in a backyard and spots the imposter inside. Eager to confront them, Sammy realizes the treehouse is blocked by a seal. It becomes apparent that he needs the Triforce to bypass this barrier. Determined, Sammy embarked on a montage where he collected the three pieces of the Triforce. Once Sammy obtained the Triforce, he returned to the treehouse and 
confronted the imposter. The imposter, acting cowardly, attempted to escape, but Sammy gave him a little chase. A fist fight ensued, with Sammy emerging victorious through an explosive punch, and the imposter was defeated. During this period, Sammy faced numerous challenges, as his videos were leaked, re-uploaded, and archived by others due to his recent hiatus and private YouTube channel. Countless mirror channels sprouted like wildfire, attracting more attention and subscribers than even Sammy himself. Sammy responded to these imposter channels with his unique style, creating a genuinely funny and absurd experience for his viewers. In May of 2014, Sammy's future on YouTube took an unexpected turn. Leaked conversations surfaced, revealing Sammy's contemplation of seizing video production for his beloved channel. The source of the leak was a user named Zach, who shared information from a private Google Plus post where Sammy had discussed his potential departure with his close friends. Regrettably, one of the participants accidentally tagged Zack in the thread, unaware of its private nature. Consequently, Zack commented on one of Sammy's private posts, stirring confusion among fans. Eventually, Sammy felt complied to address the situation publicly. In a direct and candid manner, Sammy made the revelation. Alright, I'm going to be direct. Yes, I'm quitting making videos on YouTube. However, I will release five more videos before this happens. I'm just tired of the fame, which I never really wanted in the first place. After I stop making videos for my Sammy Classic Sonic fan channel, I'll start a new channel under a secret identity. As time passed, Sammy opened up further about his motivations, engaging in conversations with his fans. He expressed concerns about losing his gaming prowess and his discomfort with the level of popularity he had achieved. Sammy yearned to return to simply just being Sammy, shedding the burdens and expectations that came with his online fame. He shared his vision of how people would look back fondly at his videos, reminiscing about the days of Sammy Classic Sonic fan, creating a lasting impact. The final five videos on Sammy's agenda had already been planned, with the first one titled Emulators and Why I Don't Support Nintendo's VC Anymore slated for release on May 12th. However, the following day, Sammy surprised his fans with a post on the Sammy Classic Sonic fan subreddit. He confessed to experiencing a change of heart, abandoning his initial decision to abandon his channel. Sammy revealed a genuine fondness for his fanbase, acknowledging the kindness and positivity he had encountered among them. The thought of no longer making videos where he appeared and spoke struck a chord within him. Sammy attributed his decision to quit to the stress he was facing, ultimately deciding to stay for the time being. In his heartfelt message, Sammy expressed his reconsideration. Two days ago, I decided I was going to abandon my YouTube channel. However, I'm starting to reconsider. I was never a fan of all of this e-fame, but a vast majority of my fanbase consists of friendly people like you guys. You guys all really like my videos, and I was just about to abandon you all. I still have plenty to do with this channel. E3's coming up, people are anticipating Sammy Classic Sonic Fans Adventure 3, and I promised playthroughs. Recognizing the unique essence of his videos with his on-screen presence, Sammy acknowledged that it wouldn't be the same if he abandoned that style of content creation. He heeded the advice of his fans, realizing that he should continue playing video games frequently while simultaneously producing videos, particularly playthroughs. Sammy came to believe that his earlier decision had been driven by stress, and he reassured his audience that he intended to stay at least for the time being. Moreover, Sammy pondered the new channel he had created, contemplating its purpose. He proposed the idea of utilizing it for gameplay content, while maintaining Sammy Classic Sonic Fan as a platform for updates and reviews. Ultimately, Sammy convinced himself that his identity and authenticity transcended the existence of a channel named Sammy Classic Sonic Fan. He affirmed his commitment to his online presence, declaring, All in all, I've convinced myself that I can still be myself with or without having a channel called Sammy Classic Sonic Fan. That channel doesn't make me any more or less of who I really am. I'm here to stay. Sammy's return seems certain. However, doubts lingered. Would this change of heart be lasting, or would the future hold more surprises for Sammy Classic Sonic fan and his dedicated fans? Only time would reveal the answer. Once June of 2014 arrived, Sammy's presence on YouTube began to dwindle as the number of uploaded videos drastically dropped. Only a few videos made their way to his channel that month. On July 18th, Sammy took a step to differentiate his channel from mirror re-upload channels by changing its name to Sammy the Classic Sonic Fan. Additionally, he announced the launch of an auxiliary channel called Adventures in Retro Gaming, where he intended to share Let's Play videos of various games. However, this endeavor didn't last long, as Sammy soon renamed the channel to Sammy Tanuki gamer, only to eventually abandon it and delete the channel altogether. August brought a surprising revelation from Sammy when he unveiled 
filed his new blog, Sammy Tanuki Blogger, chronicling his experiences as he transitioned into attending a public high school. The blog featured three archived posts from August 27th to September 13th, detailing Sammy's adventures in making friends and adjusting to the new school environment. This marked Sammy's last public appearance online for a while, as he once again disappeared from the public eye. This quiet period endured until February of 2015, when Sammy sparked excitement by changing the About section on his channel. He hinted at a return to video making, but surprised his fans by releasing an audio-only video in March. Contrary to his earlier claim, he expressed intentions of releasing videos weekly, but unfortunately that plan never materialized. Sammy uploaded a video on August 5th, 2015, proclaiming that his return was genuine this time. Sammy's return ushered in a significant leap in video quality. His content featured improved editing, a solid intro, well-crafted scripts, and a more relaxed and down-to-earth tone. It was a departure from the type of content his fans were accustomed to, and they greeted the upgraded format with positive acclaim. Many expressed surprised at Sammy's more mature tone and showed their support. However, this new iteration of Sammy's channel was short-lived, as he uploaded only a few more videos sporadically before once again seizing video production and social media activity altogether. Fast forward to February 19th, 2016, a day that marked Sammy's return to the internet with an unlisted video on his original Sammy Classic Sonic fan channel. Titled Update, the thumbnail depicted an older-looking Sammy in front of the camera. Fans rejoiced, relieved to see Sammy alive and well, but their joy turned into concern as Sammy revealed the reason behind his extended absence. He disclosed his ongoing struggle with depression, which he had recently been diagnosed with and had been grappling with since 2015. Sammy contemplated making a return to video making after receiving support from his fans, but ultimately changed his mind and decided to delete his channel. Instead of completely erasing his content, he made all of his videos private. Hello everyone, um, this is Sammy the Classic Sonic fan. Honestly, I'm kind of nervous to be making this, but as some of you may know, in recent years, I've uh, just been intermittently leaving and appearing back on YouTube, t taking breaks for months at a time. And I, I think I've raised quite a few uh, concerns. I mean, the truth is, and I guess I've been struggling with this um, illness for years, but it, it worsened um, early last year, and that is depression. And in this time, I've, I've lost um, interest and in motivation I've had in all sorts of activities, including gaming um, and even making YouTube videos. On September 1st, Sammy took to the Sammy Classic Sonic Fan subreddit to post an AMA, offering a detailed update on his life since the update video. In his post, Sammy addressed his absence and the changes he had experienced. Thankfully, he no longer considered himself depressed, but acknowledged occasional mood swings and confidence issues. Sammy confessed that he had lost interest in his channel, explaining that it was created when he was 14 and he never intended for it to last a lifetime. As a now 17-year-old, soon to be 18, he found himself uncertain about the future of his YouTube channel and felt that his personality had evolved beyond the YouTuber persona. Sammy provided a recap of his activity since June, including his family's move, getting a job at SkyZone, obtaining his driver's license and transitioning back to a public high school. He also mentioned pursuing his artistic endeavors by developing imaginary series and expressing an interest in improving his art skills and potentially learning animation. Despite his positive reception upon returning, Sammy decided to completely delete his official channel on September 5th, 2016, citing stress over maintaining the channel's presence. Despite his channel's deletion, Sammy explored various avenues of content creation throughout mid and late 2016. He started another blog in May, but abandoned it shortly after. Sammy remained active on Instagram, where he shared personal updates about his life. In June 2017, he excitedly announced his commitment to IUPUI for studying computer science, having previously committed to Purdue University. Shortly after, Sammy graduated from high school, entering adulthood. Sammy had undergone a visible transformation right before the eyes of his audience. His content had matured alongside him while still retaining his unique and quirky personality. No longer the squealing, raging kid who produced lengthy rants about Nintendo and Sonic games, Sammy had become a college student with greater aspirations. Rather than being a burden, content creation had once again become his creative outlet. It allowed him to express himself and share his life experiences. Sammy had become 
become more likable, adopting a deeper and more down-to-earth tone that set him apart from his earlier self. With this change in approach, Sammy prepared himself for a genuine and honest comeback. Embracing his status as an online meme sensation, he launched a brand new channel on June 6, 2018, called the Imperishable Sammy Zenith. Sammy Classic Sonic fan had been reborn into something entirely different, and it would eventually gain traction. Sammy made his official return to YouTube on June 6, 2018, after deleting his original Sammy Classic Sonic fan channel. His comeback video, titled Sammy's Bizarre Party, showcased his self-awareness and willingness to embrace his eccentricity. The video description itself hinted at the strangeness viewers could expect, with Sammy running, jumping, impersonating characters, and reciting memes. This open and obvious self-awareness with his humor was a departure from his earlier content, which often drew ridicule rather than unironic support due to his reputation as a raging, screaming child. However, this time the audience laughed with Sammy instead of at him, appreciating his self-awareness and recognizing his growth as a person. The response to Sammy's return was overwhelmingly positive, with comments expressing support and admiration for his growth. People marveled at how Sammy had evolved from one of the biggest lolcows on YouTube to a more likable and relatable person, which very easily shifted the overall public perception of Sammy in a more positive direction. Excitement grew as Sammy continued uploading content throughout 2018, including commentary videos, rants, a Super Mario Odyssey Let's Play series, and reactions to Nintendo's 2018 E3 presentation. Viewers appreciated his maturity and how he had moved on beyond his previous persona. Although Sammy took a break from uploading on YouTube, his social media presence remained active, showcasing his life as a college student and part-time worker. His commitment to his education and job impressed many, considering his past struggles with trolls and his parents' attempts to limit his online presence. The anticipation for Sammy's return reached new heights in April 2019 when the trailer for the Sonic the Hedgehog movie received significant backlash. Memes mocking the trailer circulated, and Sammy's name resurfaced in discussions. Fans speculated about his possible reaction and eagerly waited his response. The situation escalated when Felix Shelberg, better known as PewDiePie, dedicated a 15-minute video to Sammy, reminiscing about his past videos and inviting him to collaborate on PewDiePie's channel. Sammy's all grown up now, but I would like to ask Sammy if you're watching, would you like to do me the honor of hosting meme review Sonic Memes? The people need to know your opinion on Sonic Memes. Sammy's Instagram page gained a surge in followers, although the collaboration never materialized despite him publicly accepting PewDiePie's invitation, leading to some disappointment among fans. Despite this, Sammy's presence in the online sphere continued to captivate people's attention. A video captured Sammy sharing his humorous old videos from 2013 during a kinesiology lab, further highlighting his more relatable personality, which quickly circulated across Twitter. Finally, in a vlog released months later, Sammy finally reviewed the Sonic movie after its release, marking a significant moment for him and his fans. With the controversy around the Sonic movie subsiding due to the positively received overhaul of Sonic's character design, fans were more interested in his thoughts on the film itself rather than his reaction to the trailer. So not only did this vlog finally give the fans what they have been waiting to see, but it also seemingly inspired Sammy to upload again. 2020 found Sammy returning to consistently uploading and showcasing his versatility as a content creator. He was now producing commentary vlogs, mukbangs, traditional vlogs, reactions, and gaming videos, including a Let's Play series for Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury. Notably, he even changed his YouTube channel name back to Sammy Classic Sonic Fan, evoking an even further sense of nostalgia with his content. People were also pleasantly surprised to see that Sammy Classic Sonic Fan had gotten a new girlfriend, which he had announced in an Instagram post. Popular YouTuber Slazo posted a tweet about it, receiving over 54,000 likes. However, Sammy eventually took this and all other posts featuring his girlfriend down to protect her privacy. Although it is unsure when exactly the relationship started, we do know now that they are no longer together and broke up sometime in late 2020 to 2021. Another significant development occurred when Chadtronic, a popular reaction YouTuber, collaborated with Sammy. Chadtronic's previous Sammy 
reaction videos from the early to mid 2010s played a pivotal role in his channel's eventual success, and their collaboration surprised many, especially due to Sammy's previous history of not reacting well to his content being made fun of online. Chad Tronic released an interview video with Sammy in May of 2021, discussing Sammy's origins, rise to fame, embracing of the meme, the Sonic movie, and even the missed opportunity with PewDiePie. The wholesome reunion between Sammy and Chad Tronic delighted fans, as although they had gone through their ups and downs, they managed to become friends in the end. During the interview with Chad Tronic, Sammy Classic Sonic fan revealed some interesting details and made more important announcements, shedding light on past events and future plans. One of the topics discussed was Sammy's missed opportunity to collaborate with PewDiePie, a moment that had left many fans curious. Sammy finally addressed the issue, offering an explanation for why the collaboration never happened. According to Sammy, he had reached out to Felix and even made a public post, expressing his eagerness to work together. Unfortunately, his attempts went unanswered, and eventually he noticed that PewDiePie had unfollowed him. The lack of response left not just his followers, but Sammy himself puzzled, as he had hoped and expected for a collaboration to happen. In addition to sharing insights into the missed opportunity with PewDiePie, Sammy had an exciting announcement for his loyal fanbase. He revealed his plans to create the long-awaited third installment of his beloved short film series, Sammy Classic Sonic Fans Adventure. Okay, here's my last, here's my last question. Uh, you started uploading a lot again on your YouTube channel. What does the future of Sammy Classic Sonic Fan look like? Do you have any secret projects or anything planned or anything? I do. I do have a secret project plan, and uh, you know, I might as well just come out and say it. Um, Sammy Classic Sonic Fans Adventure Three. Oh it's my happening. god! Oh my! It's god. happening. We already we already filmed all the footage. Um, I got it through. Let's yeah. go. Oh, Fire Mario Backpack's gonna be in it, by the way. All the, all the stuff that Jet you love Tronic from- exclusive, everyone! Jetronic yeah. exclusive! My paper just flew all over the floor. This revelation sparked immense excitement among his followers who had been eagerly anticipating the continuation of this particular series, one of many from the good old Lolcow days. To add to the anticipation, Sammy and Chad Tronic delighted their audience with a joint reaction video on Sammy's channel, where they watched and reacted to Sammy Classic Sonic Fans Adventure 2 together. The video was brimming with laughter, inside jokes, and genuine camaraderie, leaving viewers with a sense of warmth and nostalgia. It was a heartwarming reunion between two content creators with a rich history. The collaboration with Chad Tronic not only provided closure on unanswered questions, but also allowed Sammy to showcase his growth and resilience as not just a content creator, but a person. Despite the missed opportunity with PewDiePie, Sammy's journey had continued to evolve, and he remained eager to work on more entertaining and engaging videos for his audience. The announcement of the upcoming installment in the Sammy Classic Sonic Fans Adventure series further solidified his dedication to his craft and his desire to continue sharing his life and perspective with the world. Throughout the entirety of 2021, Sammy remained dedicated to his YouTube channel, continuously creating content and sharing life updates on his Instagram page. However, it was in early 2022 that he unveiled something truly exciting, the trailer for his highly anticipated project, Sammy Classic Sonic Fans Adventure 3. Even from the trailer alone, it was evident that there was much to unravel. Although the video still possessed that distinct home movie quality, one couldn't help but notice the significant improvement in overall production compared to Sammy's previous endeavors. The visual quality surpassed his recent uploads, which often featured minimal editing, and showcased a promising video in the making. What stood out about the trailer was the expanded scope of Sammy's project. Unlike his earlier works, which were predominantly filmed in his room or backyard, the upcoming film featured diverse locations and a cast of actors, indicating a remarkable leap forward in production value. Furthermore, the trailer exuded a self-awareness that was hard to ignore. It was clear that Sammy and everyone involved understood that this movie wasn't meant to be a cinematic masterpiece. Instead, it was a lighthearted endeavor, a group of friends coming together to create a fun and silly film. This aspect shone through vividly, embracing the spirit of camaraderie and unabashed enjoyment. On March 31st, 2022, the highly anticipated moment arrived. Sammy Classic Sonic Fans Adventure 3, Imperishable, premiered on Sammy's channel, captivating viewers with its one hour and three minute duration, the longest video Sammy had ever released. The video's description provided a tantalizing summary of the film's premise. 
Samus, setting the stage for an exciting adventure. Based on Sammy Classic Sonic Fans Adventure and Sammy Classic Sonic Fans Adventure 2, Sammy Classic Sonic Fans Adventure 3 continues the story that began over eight years ago. In his first ever feature-length film, Sammy embarks on a thrilling journey against the ticking clock, racing to collect the Dragon Balls and overcome his imperishable curse before being transported to another dimension at midnight. This zany quest is one you won't want to miss, as Sammy encounters formidable opponents and discovers that his own power and resolve might not be enough to survive. Will you join our dear Sammy Zenith, fellow adventurer? For old times' sake? Despite months of anticipation and teasing, the video did not achieve the same viewership as some of Sammy's previous uploads, garnering approximately 20,000 views. However, what's interesting is that it quickly became one of the most highly praised videos in Sammy's repertoire. This film is absolutely amazing. It's astonishing how much has changed since the first two installments. Sammy and the rest of us have grown immensely, but what matters most is our enduring love and embrace of our childhood passions and ideas, and how we can channel them into wonderful future endeavors. Exceptional work, Sammy, and to everyone involved in this masterpiece. Your past self would be proud. Keep up the amazing work, and I'm thrilled to witness what the future holds. This video is a nostalgic trip for me on so many levels. I, too, grew up in Indiana and only recently relocated to Florida. Strangely enough, I feel like I recognize many of the places in your video, though I can't quite put my finger on them. I used to create videos just like this. I'm about six years older than you, and I started with a camcorder and 8mm tapes. Your video reminds me of something that I would have made in 2008, filmed in the exact same locations. This was fantastic. Talk about reconnecting with your childhood. It's astonishing how our lives have converged at this point, in this chat, more than six years later, all motivated by a meme. Our lives have changed, and like Sammy, we've grown into adults who still cherish and embrace the games and videos of our childhood without shame. This is a love letter to people like us. Thank you, Sammy. Now, we just need Sonic Adventure 3 and Half-Life 3. Although the viewership may not have matched Sammy's other uploads, the positive reception of Sammy Classic Sonic Fans Adventure 3 validated the tremendous effort and creativity poured into the project. It served as a testament to Sammy's growth as a content creator and the enduring bond between him and his fanbase. As the film concluded, fans eagerly awaited the next chapter in Sammy's ever-evolving saga. And that brings us to the present day, where we catch up with Sammy and see how he's doing now. Rest assured, Sammy is doing great. He has maintained his active presence on YouTube and Instagram, continuing to share his life and creations with his audience. His Instagram posts offer glimpses into his life, featuring outings with friends, moments with his dog, and quality time with his family. In fact, Sammy has recently entered a new romantic relationship with a girl named Julie, and they have been together for several months, which is great to see. Sammy's passion for Sonic and Nintendo still burns brightly, but he has also shown interest in exploring other forms of media, such as anime and manga. Currently, his YouTube channel boasts around 73,000 subscribers, with his recent uploads mainly consisting of gaming commentary videos. Over the past couple of years, I've had the pleasure of building a friendship with Sammy online, bonding over shared interests in anime such as Dragon Ball and JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I even had the opportunity to contribute my graphic design work to his YouTube channel, creating the channel art you see today. Of course, a video about Sammy would not be complete without featuring the man himself. So let's hear from Sammy directly and get a glimpse into his life today. Hey, how's it going, man? It's going great, dude. Wait, hold up. Can you like turn your camera around real quick? It's showing you as like sideways. Oh, that's oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Sammy, um, it's great to have you here. Um, before we get into the interview, would you mind giving us like a brief introduction? Sure. Sure. So, um, my my name is well, I go by many names. Um, I'm the imperishable Sammy Zenith, but I'm more famously known as Sammy Classic Sonic fan. Um, I'm kind of considered an internet meme, uh, but um, people who weren't around like ten years ago or even five years ago may not know entirely about that um so basically my videos kind of blew up in popularity screaming really loudly um in a really high-pitched tone because i was a kid at the time and uh i think that combination people just found very um exhilarating <laughs> i guess yeah. 
So uh, it, yeah. it's definitely exhilarating, like watching back and like you know looking at those videos. It, it's it's pretty funny, just like seeing all of your reactions to stuff. Yeah. So how have you been, Sammy? Um, are there any like exciting updates in your life? You know. Um. Well. Uh. Let's see. I am moving soon. Um. To a different town. Um. Called Carmel. So I guess that's kind of exciting. Um. Let's see. I'm hoping to graduate at the end of this year. Yeah. And other than that, as far as like um maybe videos go, um I I am looking to like have more consistent uploads on my channel. Um like uh I I'm currently working on one right now about uh Sonic Superstars, which was announced recently. Got me very excited, so Yeah. Um, I'm excited to see what content you make in the future. I, I've been enjoying those recent commentary videos with like your avatar and all that I i've been enjoying those. oh thank you it kind of reminds me of like the the late 2015 like sammy v classic sonic fans oh, yeah. era. Yeah, i kind of like being old-fashioned you know because like when there's so many uh youtubers out there these days that just hop on the latest trend it's like i don't know i i kind of want to be the opposite of that so I guess one of the main things that people are wondering is like, how old are you right now? Because everyone back then thought that you were lying about your age, like that you weren't really 14, 15. So how old are you right now, Sam, to prove the haters wrong? Um, yeah, so I mean, I'm sure it's a lot more believable now. I'm 24 now. Um, I, I mean, back then I can understand why people thought I was a lot younger than I said I was, but, um, I mean, nowadays when I say, like, oh, well, I'm 24, I don't really have as many people yeah. saying, like, what, really? I, you know what I mean? But, um, uh, just because of the way I carry myself, I'm a lot more, like, mature. Yeah, I did not really act my age, um, or sound my age, so that's There's no okay. shame in that. There's no shame in being immature. Everyone's a little immature. Oh, yeah, I mean, I still am, just people <laughs> don't see it, but... <laughs> uh, otherwise, um, I, I do want to make, like, more adventure videos and, uh, uh, things of that nature, so, um, yeah. Yeah, you said that earlier that, uh, you're close to graduating, so, like, are you still attending IUPUI? Like, how's your educational journey going? Um, so I don't, like, do, um, traditional college anymore. I'm doing WGU, which is, like, an online college. Um, that just works best for me because, um, I don't live as close to Indianapolis as I, um, did previously. So this is just what works for me. But, um, it also is allowing me to progress towards my degree faster. Yeah. I remember when you were first entering college, you said that you were studying computer science. What degree are you going for now? Um, yeah. So now I'm wanting to get a teaching degree, specifically, um, like special education, just because I've kind of always felt like a pull towards, um, um, fellow people with like mental disabilities being one myself. That's awesome, dude. So obviously your YouTube journey has seen its various ups and downs and uh, your early years on YouTube have garnered a lot of attention. Uh, can you sort of take us back to 2013, 2014, um, when you were known as Sammy Classic Sonic fan? Like, what was it like making the videos, you know, dealing with hate and trolls and essentially becoming a meme in real life? Like, what was it like back then in the mind of Sammy? Oh, I mean, it. it in some ways, I remember a lot of that vividly. In other ways, I don't. Um, because it was just so long ago, but, um, yeah, basically, um, I, I, I started making videos as just an outlet, like an emotional outlet, um, because my, my parents were a bit, like, protective of me at times, so I, not at all discrediting them as parents, because they are really good parents, but, um, I, I, there were times where it was, it was difficult for me to, you know, just be online schooled and by myself all the time. So I feel like making videos made me feel less lonely, like people could hear me, especially like when I was getting angry and stuff like that. I mean, I, I, I mean, think what you want, but at least people were like, um, watching my videos and it, it made me feel noticed. So that's, that's a good thing, dude. So from that era, 
Do you have like a like a favorite upload or a favorite creative project that you look back upon fondly? Like what like is there a specific upload or thing that you've made that like has a sort of special remembrance for you? I do. I do. Um so my first video that I ever made pre Sammy Classic Sonic fan was called Flamber's Adventure. Um it was basically like me going doing like a backyard adventure type video and you may notice that sounds very similar to Sammy yeah. Classic Sonic yeah. Adventure. Yeah, it does. And I would say that and the sequel that I made to it were my favorite videos from that back then just because like it was just me being myself, being like before all of the drama, and, and, before all of the lol cow stuff. Or, or yeah, yeah, and it, and it was it was just me, you know, not putting on like this angry persona. It was just me having fun. And, yeah, yeah. So I, I can I can definitely relate to that because it sort of takes you back to a time like before all of the trolls, before all of the drama, back when YouTube was just sort of like a a creative outlet. Uh, and you didn't have as many eyes on you, you know? Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and I would say even at the times, at the time, my video, my, my videos, um, were sort of like escalating in popularity still. Um, yeah. I would say around like late May is when I started noticing a whole bunch of views pouring in, um, of 2013 that is. Um, but, uh, yeah, at, at, but... I, so I feel like in a way making those videos was taking a risk because people would I was afraid people would think like oh this is all fake and stuff like that but um a lot of people really liked it and you know some people still like poked fun at it because because I mean, you know it was, well, it was fun to laugh at like it, it it was pretty fun to laugh at like yeah some people like could kind of get the idea that oh maybe it's a character maybe he's just acting but either way it's funny just because you know all of the screaming all of the raging like just in general it's you know it has a very right. comedic nature right yeah exactly um <laughs> so either way you know people are going to take that enjoyment out of it so either way i'd say you've left a pretty positive impact you know overall despite the fact that you might have been hated at the time like overall you did make a lot of people you know smile and laugh oh yeah yeah, thank you. Yeah. So when people discuss your absence from social media, they often mention your 2016 update video where you opened up about your struggles yeah. with depression. Yeah. However, it seems that many channels that have covered your story tend to overlook the fact that uh, that's not the first time that you've had to leave social media. Uh, it was when you were doxxed and you had to take sure. a temporary break from YouTube. Sure. Um, could you share how that event impacted you and your family in real life outside of social media? Yeah, so uh, that time wasn't really my choice. Um, the other time that you mentioned, that was my choice. Um, yeah. But the first time around, um, you know, my parents decided they kind of had like enough of like people uh, basically coming on to my video videos and saying like not so nice things about me and especially with like certain things leaking out onto the internet like um our um home address that was um that was sort of where they drew the line and personally yeah. i could i could i could sort of see why and i mean if i if i was a parent i would probably do the same thing myself so that's um, yeah, and that's such an awful thing to you know that someone can do to someone else to like you know, dock it's someone. It's necessary because I mean, it's like yeah, because it's a video. Why, why, why go to this extent? Was it at that moment when you know you realized that like, oh shoot, like my personal information's out there? Was it was that the moment where you realized that you know maybe social media might be a little bit more dangerous than you may have expected? I mean, I had already known about the dangers of social media even before. Um, I started my channel um, because I, I would say I was pretty well educated on that. Um, I, I had been like using YouTube for a while um, and even some social media, but um, it, yeah, I still shouldn't have been so out in the open about like my um, my private, well, some of my private life details yeah. were lived out without without any fault of my own but um you know that it, i should have been a bit more careful about like you know revealing my my true name and whatnot um and i sort of took some damage control measures afterwards to sort of um uh to sort of fix 
that in a way. But um, yeah, just, just uh, I, I think what really put things into perspective was like my dad sitting down and having a talk with me, like saying, look, I know you, this isn't you, you know, this is you basically looking for attention. And he was right. Cause he knew, he knows me, he knew me better than anyone else did, so. Yeah, honestly, I can imagine that just being like a very scary moment for like me and my family if that were ever to happen to me. Um, and one thing that I was wondering is, you know, your online presence has been around for so many years. Ever since the doxing happened, um, do you or your family like still receive any like harassment, whether online or in real life, like to this day? Um, we don't, we haven't lived at that house for quite some time. We moved out, out of that house, like, I would say almost seven years ago. Yeah. By this point. Um, and, uh, I, I think, I think, like, like, um, internet trolls and whatnot still contact my, uh, family members without them, without them inviting it. You know, like, my sister will tell me sometimes she still gets messages, and my mom does too, I guess. And, um, I remember one time, like, I think, well, I think it's been five years since this happened, but one time, like, they called my grandparent, um, so... Your grandparent? Yeah, it's just, I don't even know how they got there. That's a... Crazy, dude. That is crazy. I, it's definitely died yeah. down quite a bit. Yeah, I, I'm definitely glad it has. Honestly, like I said, that would be just way too scary of an experience for me to handle. Like, just knowing that my personal information, you know, address, family's info would be out there. Like, I'd be so terrified. Yeah, it kind of was terrifying. Um, I've had other people tell me um, that, like, they wouldn't be able to deal with the levels of, um, basically, embarrassments that I was subjected to. And just being, like, um, publicly, uh, maybe not shamed. Well, in some ways, yeah. I yeah. Things, but I mean, they were making just... jokes at your expense, so I mean, that would pretty much be shaming. But yeah, but basically just not having any privacy, or almost no privacy, and uh... Yeah, because at that point, everyone was trying to figure out where you were, like, you know, what right. you were doing documenting every move, you know, with all the re-uploads and archive channels. Right, so I'm not sure how I dealt with all that, but, um, yeah. I, I, I just, you know, I, I just sort of had this idea in the back of my mind, it's like, you know what, this is temporary, you know, and in some ways it was, in some ways, I mean, clearly it wasn't. So, yeah, but it's it's okay. Yeah, I, I I appreciate that you're doing well today. Um, yeah. So on to the next question. Um, the question of whether your Sammy Classic Sonic fan persona was an act or genuine has been asked before. Obviously, you've answered it a few times, but uh, just for the documentary, like we let's clarify it once more. Uh, can you shed some light on that? Like, were the videos staged, or did they represent your genuine, unfiltered emotions at the time? Um, I mean, the videos, like, I, I mean, I sort of, I, I mean, I sort of came up with them on the spot, so I wouldn't say they were, they were staged. Um, and, uh, you know, in, in some ways, that was sort of like an, an exact exaggeration of myself at the time so I re like if you knew me in real life I was a really awkward kid but not like that angry uh, yeah. over petty things just like kind of like you're playing you know, there's the camera but you're still using that as an outlet to express your real opinions yeah yeah exactly like I I there's still a lot of people could tell you there's still something off about me um and a lot of people knew that I you know I had autism. I have autism. I mean, that's not something that goes away, but yeah. um, it was definitely something that affected me at the time, and that was a very real thing. So, uh, you know, it wasn't so. It, it wasn't really like me being, you know, some kind of mastermind troll or something yeah. like that. Like, like it wasn't a hundred percent a character. It's, it was your real opinions. It was your real like feelings and everything. You just kind of played it up for the camera. Pr pretty hopefully. much, yeah. Like I, I didn't spend all day thinking like, oh god, yeah. I hate Call of Duty so much. Like, you know like, what I mean? Video game opinions. It didn't affect you that deeply, you know. Yeah, and I, I, and it's not like Sonic was my religion or something. Like I, I have a life, you know. Yeah, I, that's, that's good. That's good. I'm not a monster. <laughs> so yeah. over the years, obviously, you know talking about how you've matured um obviously over the years you've transformed 
and how it sort of evolved significantly uh, in terms of like your personality, your content. Uh, how would you describe your growth and evolution from your early days? Um, yeah, I mean, a lot has changed since then. I'm definitely more independent. I do most things by myself. Uh, sometimes I still will ask like my mom, like, hey, can you help me with this? It's stuff like that but um otherwise you know i i pay my own bills i i work i drive myself um i i manage like my studies and everything cook for myself i i do pretty much yeah. everything yeah you're like a, you're you're basically a fully independent adult yeah yeah exactly and you know i'm i'm just at a completely different stage in life compared to back then like i i think and sometimes people forget like being a kid is it's drastically different. Even being a teenager is drastically different yeah. compared to being an adult. Like, they're, you're just completely different mentally, so. Yeah, I, can, I mean, I'm just now entering adulthood, so like, obviously, I don't think I've experienced, you know, enough change yet, but I can definitely yeah. see my goals and ambitions going elsewhere. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, so. Um, so yeah, um, on to the next question. Your recent project, um, Sammy Classic Sonic Fans Adventure 3, uh, it received an overwhelmingly positive response from your fan. Um, what inspired you to continue the series after such a long hiatus? And how did it feel to witness the enthusiastic reception from your fan? I would say uh, I did it both for my fans and myself, you know? I It's something that um, a lot of my hardcore fans have been wanting to see for a long time. Um, and uh, even if it didn't get the greatest amount of views, People loved it. The people who watched it loved it. And that's really what I like to see. And also, I had so much fun making that movie. And so did my friends. I I honestly kind of uh, miss getting to do that with them. Um, and uh, I, I with, with the next project, I don't know if it'll... It, it probably won't be, like, quite the same. But uh, I still look forward to working on that as well. Um, that'd be great. Let's make it happen. Oh, let's make it happen. Semi Classic Sonic Fans Adventure 4. Let's do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, and I, I know, it, it's, it's good just getting the chance to bring out my, my inner child just because, um, yeah. I don't know. It, it's, it's life very, can it be a very nostalgic feeling. Yeah, life can be boring at times, and, uh, when there's just so much expectations on me and my professional life it's nice to get away from that and just you know Go back to being a kid yeah just be be my true self in a way <laughs> yeah so obviously the production value of sammy classic sonic fans adventure 3 showed significant improvement compared to your earlier videos so how did you plan out the making of this movie and how did you assemble you know a team to sort of bring your vision to life i would say if it wasn't for them it probably wouldn't have even happened um because um they they definitely encouraged me a lot to do this i was i was hesitant going into it um but we planned we really did plan it out months in advance we I mean, we pro I probably should have done a bit more planning on my part um, because there are definitely times throughout the video where I'm sure you can tell it, it's like, did they even really uh, script this or anything? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I there wasn't really like a solid script. It was just me. Yeah. Uh, it was basically just Not like really meant to be like a masterpiece or anything. Just you know, kind of like just a bunch of friends having fun. Right, yeah, uh, yeah, pretty much. And um, it, it was basically just an outline like, oh, uh, you know, we'll, in this scene, we'll be doing this. You know, there weren't like lines or anything. Pretty much just made everything. Uh, we pretty much just improvised everything. Um, That's awesome. And, uh, so you kind of just like made it up as you went along? Yeah, exactly. And um, that's funny. You know, <laughs> that's I, so funny. And one of my, and the editor um, who's working with me on the movie, he he was uh, you know very much an advocate. Okay, we need to like go back and refilm a lot of things and edit edit like clean it up. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. I, I was I was kind of on the opposite side of the fence. I was like, no, you know what? The previous the previous Sammy's adventure movies were pretty Just much like that. this. You know, so like, why make this anything more than what it is? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I totally get it. So throughout your YouTube journey, um, you faced 
various challenges and setbacks. Um, how do you stay motivated to continue creating content even during times where things don't necessarily go as planned or when you're faced with negative feedback? Sometimes I, I don't have um, really have like the drive to make videos either just due to laziness or just being busy um, with life but um, something that I've learned is that it's not so much about having like willpower as it is just like habits you know if you get into the habit of something yeah this is something that I've learned with like my exercise routine like if you get into the habit of something it just becomes like second nature you don't even think of it as like oh I gotta do this you know it, it's just like okay it's time to do this you know what I mean so um I think it's just really a matter of making it more of a habit so that's really what I need to do it can still be hard with everything they have going on but um you know um it, it's yeah it's, it's just like I said <laughs> yeah so on to the last question um if anybody's been following you for like the past year or so they'll notice through your Instagram posts that uh, you recently entered a romantic relationship with a girl named Julie. So, uh, how are you two? Like, how's that going? Yeah, we've um, we've actually been uh, going out for um, the past, let me think, one year and nine months. Um, so, I would say really good. Um, but we didn't become like officially a couple until um, last year. Like, uh, I would say last um, March of last year. But um, yeah, I it's. It's it's been great. It's it's really been like eye opening, you know, just um just to you know experience like uh what 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 it's like to you know have like a partner because I I feel like before that I was really just like living for myself. All feels about like my own priorities and whatnot, but um you know really uh. It, it it's taught me to you know be more like selfless and um yeah. and to be and to pretty much like put others before myself not just her but everyone because you know it's 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 hard to find like a balance between um you know being like in a serious relationship and still maintaining all the same like friendships and not even not even just that but even like your own um per uh your own like alone time and everything because i i am someone who still uh, appreciates his solitude thank you sammy for sharing your journey and insights with us today you know, it's been a pleasure talking to you, getting a sort of deeper understanding of your experiences. Sammy, can you give us your best frickin' frick? Um, let's see. All right, you frickin' frick. I am so sick and tired of you guys, um, criti criticizing me and my, my opinions. I, I don't know. <laughs> it's perfect. It's perfect. I heard so much of the old Sammy in there. It's actually <laughs> scary. All right. All right. Hello, Rosa. All right. Ow, God! <laughs> Ow! I'm or something like that. Oh my God! Yeah. <laughs> I'm good at those kinds of voices. Oh my God! Ow. That's hard, like that. dude. That's the best impression I've ever heard. That's genuinely. <laughs> oh my God! Uh, well, you know what? I think we're gonna end it right there because that's just the perfect way to leave it off. Um, thank you so much for doing this with me, Sammy. Um, Thanks for having me on. Yeah, no problem. And obviously, for those of you watching the documentary right now, uh, in the video right now, uh, subscribe to Sammy's YouTube channel uh, and follow him on Instagram. Yeah. Both are going to be linked yeah. in the description. I look forward to the, the outcome, the results of this documentary. Honestly, the Fire Mario Backpack debut? Yeah, yeah, let's, let's, let's go get him. Let's see what Y'all, we see are what going to witness a relic of Sammy history. Been right? sitting up here for a while. Hello, everyone. It's oh me. my god! It's the Fire Mario backpack. Sorry, I didn't think to bring you on bring you on to this. You're no, holding on to it right now. So it's it's a... everybody. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> You're holding on to the Fire Mario backpack right now. So does that mean that you have the powers that come with it? Yes, but um I can't show my powers on camera because oh, um, I see. Okay. for whatever yeah. reason, you gotta save I it can't. For the movies. <laughs> save it for the movies because they can afford to clean up the blast. Exactly. Oh, yeah, that's another thing. I can't. I can't have too many damages in my apartment or else I won't get my security. I see, yeah. <laughs> that, that's, that's relatable. You know, my Fire, Mar my Fire Mario backpack does the same, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> the Sammy Classic Sonic Fans Adventure Multiverse. Into the Sammy verse. Into the Sammy verse. <laughs> Into That's Sammy space one. time. Uh, yes, yes. I'm I'm glad somebody remembers that. <laughs> I'm making a document documentary about you dude i know everything i know everything oh of course but yeah i have four yeah but uh, but for real thank you so much for hopping on it's been a pleasure talking to you like i said everyone go subscribe to sammy right now um click on his page oh, if you're in the live right now uh subscribe to his channel thank and you. yeah all right i'm gonna end the live right now but thank you all so much for watching thank you guys and thank you sammy once again yeah thank you it was nice um getting the chance to talk with you and um everyone on here and um yeah it was it was it was nice catching up it really all right. was awesome. bye everyone bye adios As I write and record this final section of the video, I find myself reflecting on the process that led me here. The entire documentary is complete with the exception of this concluding segment, so why did it take me so long to arrive at this point? The answer lies in my interview with Sammy, which significantly altered my perspective on him. Throughout this documentary, I have crafted and shaped the narrative to trace Sammy's journey on the internet and the lasting impact he has had. However, I'm grateful that the interview allowed me to delve into Sammy's personal journey as a human being. Through the selection of personal questions, I gained a deeper understanding of Sammy's own perspective on his experiences. Engaging in a lengthy conversation with him, reminiscing about his online presence in history, has truly fostered a newfound level of respect within me. I have witnessed far too many harrowing stories of individuals who, like Sammy, began innocently as kids creating content, only to become targets of ridicule and mockery online. Sadly, such stories often end in tragedy. That's why Sammy's story stands as one of the rare examples where some Someone managed to break free from the destructive cycle of online humiliation. He recognized when it was time to leave and rebrand, and although it took multiple attempts, he ultimately made a triumphant comeback, and Sammy's now thriving like never before. It might sound cliche or strange, but in a peculiar way, I see aspects of myself reflected in Sammy. We both grew up on the internet, creating YouTube videos and sharing a passion for Nintendo. We both possessed eccentric and quirky personalities. However, beyond the camera, we were just ordinary individuals living our lives. I too have been creating content on various platforms outside of YouTube for the past three years. I cannot deny that dedicating so much time to building an online presence has influenced and altered me in certain ways online. While initially the attention felt gratifying, I soon found myself overwhelmed with anxiety and stress whenever I faced conflicts or made a misstep on social media. I believe it was this kind of pressure-induced anxiety that contributed to Sammy's depression during that period. Although we can't be certain, all indications point in that direction. Realistically, it would have been an immense challenge for a teenager on the autism spectrum aged like 14, 15, or 16 to consistently and happily manage a massive and invasive following like Sammy had at the time. As much as I might speculate about the possibility of Sammy continuing his content from the days when he would passionately vent his frustrations in front of the camera, it's unlikely. The truth is, there would have come a point where the pressure would have become overwhelming, and Sammy would have eventually succumbed to its weight. So, why do I find Sammy's story so compelling? It's because he and his journey serve as living proof that no one is bound by limitations. We have the power to shape our lives regardless of external influences or obstacles. Sammy's story is one of resilience, overcoming adversity, and repeatedly rising from the ashes. It teaches us the importance of embracing our true selves unapologetically. This concludes the Sammy classic Sonic fan documentary, and I have been Kasari. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Peace.